The 80s was the beginning of a new modern generation. There were hundreds of new companies, products, scientific breakthroughs and new technologies being released to the amazement of many. And in 1987, one of the most ambitious and expensive scientific projects was launched. Fifty minutes north of Tuscan, Arizona, in the USA, at the base of the Santa Catalina Mountains in Oracle, lies a glass and space frame facility unlike anything you've ever seen before. A set of geodesic domes and pyramids known as Biosphere 2. It was a vision that could be a step towards humans colonizing Mars. But despite being so advanced and futuristic, this project eventually turned out to be a nightmare for everyone involved. Biosphere is a 3.14 acre complex that was constructed between 1987 and 1991 with environments you would find on Earth. Its main goal was to study an artificial closed ecological system in order to demonstrate how we might support and sustain human life on other planets or moons, such as Mars or Titan. So Biosphere was designed to do two things. The first one was to be a prototype for space base on Mars, for instance. And then the second thing that it was designed to do was to be, if you will, a test tube for life. So we can bottle up life and study it so that we might understand more about the Earth. The terrarium design was conceived by engineer John P. Allen and the funding would come from Ed Bass, a billionaire heir to an oil fortune. Both men had a strong interest in the environment and with Allen's big dreams and Ed Bass's big money, the two came up with the vision to create Biosphere 2. At a conference in Oracle in 1984, Allen told everyone about his plans to build a prototype Mars colony on Earth and that the destiny of mankind was to seed Earth's life into space. Back in 1926, a Soviet scientist, Vladimir Vernadsky, wrote a book called Biosphere, which later inspired Soviet scientists to build BIOS 3 in 1972, where 10 different experiments were done, the longest one with a three-man crew lasting 180 days. In 1986, John Allen and others from the Biosphere Project would meet with Dr. Joseph Gittelson, head of the Bios 3 Project, and in 1989, a group of Biosphere 2 visited the Bios 3 facilities. John Allen had said Bios 3 and Russian insights were important to Biosphere 2. But Biosphere 2 isn't anything like the Bios 3. It was much larger, a giant, self-sustaining world with 3,800 species of plants and animals inside, and it remained the largest closed system ever created. The structure consists of three main sections, an airtight glass enclosed area above ground, an area called the technosphere which is located underground, and a designated human habitat area. The above ground structure is made with 7.2 million cubic feet of sealed glass supported by steel frames and is 91 feet tall at its highest point. Inside this structure are five ecosystems, the coastal fog desert and the tropical rainforest were inside the pyramids and between these in the middle region were the savanna grassland, mangrove wetland and ocean complete with a coral reef. The Technosphere contained all the technology to run and maintain the Biosphere environment, including two dozen air handler units that controlled air temperature and humidity. Air was circulated to the air handlers from the Energy Center, a building external from the glass enclosed area, which also provided hot and cold water to regulate temperature, and also housed generators to power Biosphere 2. On the south and west sides of Biosphere 2 sit two large above-ground geodesic domes which contain the Biosphere's lungs. These are huge variable expansion chambers that can regulate the air pressure inside the steel and glass enclosure. These giant artificial lungs were remarkable technology at the time and consisted of a heavy metal plate attached to a rubber membrane. The metal plate could be lifted or lowered to regulate the air pressure inside the domes as needed. And all this technology wasn't cheap. The original budget for the Biosphere project was $30 million, but by the time the project was fully realized, it had already cost $200 million. 
It was funded by businessman Ed Bass, who provided $150 million until 1991. This would equate to around $363 million in adjusted dollars today. The project was very ambitious, and everyone thought it would be a huge success, as great as many other projects during that time. And big money doesn't always mean something is going to be successful. But the wildest thing was about to happen that would have the whole world watching. In September 1991, four women and four men, who were called Biospherians, in NASA-style jumpsuits, would volunteer to enter Biosphere 2 and live inside without exiting the structure for two years. Each one of these people were trained to do specific tasks during the mission, and of course, there was a doctor among them. But agricultural tasks is what took up most of their time, because they were expected to produce their own food including vegetables and grains, meat, eggs, milk from farm animals, and fish raised in aquaculture beds. However, the biosphere didn't stay sealed for long. When just 12 days after going in, Jane Pointer, a young English woman in charge of the farm, put her hand in a threshing machine and severed her finger. The group's doctor was unable to reattach it, and she was evacuated from Biosphere 2 for surgery. And I was cleaning the machine, and my hand got stuck in it. She re-entered Biosphere with a duffel bag, with some circuit boards and a planting plan for the rainforest. It was the first time the public and the media started to mock and ridicule the project, and claimed her bag was filled with supplies, and also said leaving the Biosphere would not have been possible on Mars. But there were more ominous signs of trouble when, just 24 hours after the crew was sealed inside, the crew captain announced that carbon dioxide levels had risen to 521 parts per million a 45% increase over levels outside the dome. By the following day, it was a reported 826 parts per million, and each day the crew started feeling more tired and began running out of air while climbing the stairs. The oxygen uh, started going down right from where it go, but we didn't see it. After 17 months, oxygen levels had dropped to just 14.2%. The Biospherians inside were living with low oxygen levels that mountaineers experience at 17,000 feet. The crew could barely function at all. Even the doctor was having trouble adding up simple figures and disqualified himself from duty. It was initially hoped that the artificial atmosphere was merely stabilizing itself. But as time passed, it was clear there was something wrong. Wasn't until a year and four months into the mission that tanker trucks with 31,000 pounds of liquid oxygen were sent to the site to pump it inside. So, what caused this massive failure of Biosphere 2.0 to create and maintain its own oxygen levels? After some research, it was found that bacteria in the soil was the culprit. When the airlocks closed on Biosphere 2, the soil bacteria had a massive party exhaling huge amounts of carbon dioxide. Another big problem is that the vast majority of Biosphere 2 was built out of concrete, which contains calcium hydroxide. Instead of being consumed by the plant to produce more oxygen, the excess CO2 reacted with the calcium hydroxide in the concrete walls and created calcium carbonate and water. After the first mission, scientists went inside and tested the concrete walls. They found that they contained 10 times the amount of calcium carbonate on the inside than the outside of the walls. To fix this problem, all of the walls were coated with a protective layer. However, the oxygen levels continued to be a problem on the second Biosphere mission. Not only did the crew suffer from low oxygen levels, but the level of dinitrogen oxide became dangerously high, which increased the risk of brain damage because of a reduction in the synthesis of vitamin B12. But it wasn't just the humans inside that suffered from an unstable environment. The designers carefully chose a large variety of plants, animals, and insect species to be put inside Biosphere 2 to study what would happen. No one would have guessed there would have been a mass extinction inside. But some species of insects thrived in this man-made environment. Cockroaches and katydids, and an insect called the trampant that found its way inside unintentionally dominated all the other ant species. Even the toughest plant species, such as the morning glory, choked the life out of all other plants with its vines. Crew members put most of their time and energy trying to maintain their food crops, but they'd still have a hard time growing the food they needed. And in November of 1992, the hungry crew had to resort to eating seed stalks that had not been grown inside Biosphere. 
We were hungry all the time. You know, when I got up from a meal, I was hungry. It was really quite miserable from that point of view. Um, and the most difficult part, part about that is that when you get that hungry, you end up having to budget your energy. You know, by four o'clock in the afternoon, and I still had a whole field to weed or go into the rainforest and cut down a bunch of dead leaves or something, I had no more energy left. That was really hard part about being so hungry. But the problems didn't end there. Water systems became polluted with too many nutrients, and the crew had to clean their water by running it over mats of algae. Then, after using them to leach nutrients out, they would dry these mats and store them. During this time, the glass walls of Biosphere 2 were lined with TV cameras and tourists. The crew's lives turned into a reality TV show, with everyone wanting to watch what was happening inside, and if the crew would really stay inside for the whole two years without outside help. In fact, the world's first reality TV show was inspired by Biosphere 2 and was called Big Brother, which aired in the Netherlands in 1999. And true to reality TV's typical fashion, months of being locked up together while struggling with their artificial atmosphere and hunger, it also brought thousands of tourists who wanted to get a look at the massive structure and the people living inside as if they were a giant ant farm. But the entire project was deemed by many a complete failure. It was later learned that staff members made many more deliveries to the crew inside than people or the media knew. Secretly, there were deliveries of supplies including seeds, vitamins, mouse traps, and other supplies twice a month. And an ex-employee also revealed that engineers had installed a carbon dioxide scrubber to artificially manage the atmosphere. The interesting thing is that when the survivability test ended in September 1993, the crew were separated into two opposing groups that would not speak to each other. Two men and two women on each side. And it turns out that that's strangely a, a very normal occurrence for groups in, in, in enclosed environments. It, it happens in the Antarctic, it happens in space, it's just something that happens. It's incredibly uncomfortable though and, and, and heartbreaking when it's your friends that are on the other side. And two of the people that were on the other side of this divide were my best friends when I walked into the biosphere. They'd split under the pressure of sharing such a small space and disagreements about the project. It would seem that the dream of having biospheres on other worlds, such as Mars, vanished. There would be a second group of seven people to enter Biosphere 2 on March the 6th, 1994, after upgrades were made, including the sealing of the concrete walls inside. However, two of the first crew, Abigail Alling and Mark Van Thilo, would break into the sealed biosphere. The two were arrested, saying that their reason for doing this was to save this new crew inside from the dangers they faced. During the time of the break-in, 10% of Biosphere's air was exchanged with the outside. It wouldn't be long after this when Ed Bass would say that enough is enough. On April the 1st, 1994, at around 10 a.m., limos with a couple of investment bankers escorted by federal marshals arrived at the site with a temporary restraining order, and the project was taken over. All locks were changed, all communication systems were changed, and all crew and staff were prevented from receiving any data regarding research, safety, and operations. Much of the original data has never been analyzed and is either unavailable or was lost due to scientific policies and arguments. This second crew would remain inside for five months and 16 days before the mission was terminated. In January 2005, the owners of Biosphere 2 announced that they were selling the now 1,600-acre area, and in June 2007, the site was sold for just $50 million, so that houses and a resort hotel could be built on the land. However, it would still later be leased to the University of Arizona, and Biosphere 2 would still stand and be available for research and education. In 2011, Mr. Bass officially donated Biosphere 2 to the University of Arizona, who had been involved with the site since 2003, along with $20 million to support its research. Biosphere 2 still stands today, and science is still going on inside its walls. Just recently, in 2017, Edward Bass donated another $30 million to the university to continue research into global climate change and other big scientific challenges affecting the planet. The Biosphere 2 experiment failed to generate sufficient breathable air, drinkable water, and adequate food for just eight humans, despite a massive expense of over $200 million. It was a grand and ambitious experiment, in the sense that life itself is an experiment. But 
was it a complete failure? Although the project wasn't led by professional scientists, we cannot deny its importance. Bill Dempster, the engineering systems director and designer of the Sphere's lungs, says that it was a tremendous success. Biosphere 2's seal system was so fantastic that the unexpected rise in CO2 and fallid oxygen would not have been detected if not for the near total atmospheric containment. Biosphere 2 leaked just 10% of its oxygen in a year. In comparison, the retired NASA space shuttle leaked 2% a day. The agriculture system was arguably the most productive half acre of land in farming history, which the Biospherians survived on for two years. But probably the most important part of this experiment was its cultural legacy, which brought general awareness of the Earth itself as a largely closed system that can be easily and unpredictably disturbed. It's a useful lesson of just how fragile the Earth's own biosphere can be. And humans were a very important part of Biosphere 2.